welcome back to my channel. Today is the day that I am filming my final video for 2018 for BoxyCharm, as some of you are lovingly calling the trifecta of BoxyCharm videos, as this is the fourth quarterly BoxyCharm review for 2018. sure if any of you guys were going to want this last video since I've done so many BoxyCharm videos and feel like in my best and worst I may have covered some things but so many of you were like no we need the details on all of the products for the last quarter of the year so I am happy to do that for you guys today. If you are new to my channel you may or may not know yes I open the box I tell you what I got I do long wear tests but also I go in depth every month to let you know what other actual users of products are saying and I kind of let you guys know what my vibes are you tell me what your thoughts are because we all have different skin different makeup styles so it's great to be able to collaborate on stuff like this alter ego was our October box and that felt very like masquerade that felt very you know appropriate for Halloween theme times but I can say there are some things in here that I do really like and use all the time I even spoke about in my best of for 2018 and there are some things that were kind of my worst as well. First and foremost, the thing I absolutely love is the Green Clean Pharmacy Makeup Melt Away Cleansing Balm. This stuff is magic in a bottle. I don't even know how it does what it does, but I can delve into this baby and get off every bit of a crazy eye, a bold lip. It is awesome, and my face feels so cleansed afterwards. This was definitely in my best of 2018, and it is amazing. When I run out of this, I'm gonna need to buy more. Another face product that we got, I tried again this morning. Most of the stuff that I'm going to be talking about, I did another trial test for you of trying products on, filming it for you, and I'm wearing most of it today as well. I'm even wearing two different types of mascara that I'm going to be doing close-ups for in just a little bit. This morning, again for the second time, tried the Dermovia Lace Appeal Mask. And this time I did the opposite of what I did last time because I didn't put on enough product the first time I reviewed this for you. So this morning, I caked my face up all over the area that I really wanted to get any imperfections, any impurities out of my face. I specifically put a lot in this area because this is where my pores are the bossiest, on my forehead, all over, but I avoided, again, hairlines, things like that. And then after 20 minutes, and I waited the full 20 minutes, pulled it in the dauber motion as it tells you to on the bag, and this time it definitely cleared a lot more, whereas last time I had still a lot of residue like on the forehead and on the cheeks because I didn't apply enough product. Really cleared and like pulled off everything in the major outside zones, but right here where again my pores really just grow and clutter, we won't get too deep into that, it didn't do much and I had pressed when I had the mask on in those areas to really hopefully grab on this time because I again experienced that last time. Maybe it's my face shape, maybe it's the way my mask pulls on my ears versus my face. I don't know, maybe it's a me problem, but it really for the second time in a row did not do well where I really wanted it to. And as we all know, you inspect the mask if you say you don't, you fib in because you totally do. And it did okay, it did okay, but most of my pores that I need really cleansed aren't out here, they're here. So I don't really know if I would even try to salvage the mask because I know you can like wash the masks you guys told me and if it weren't for you guys I would not have known that. You can wash the lace masks and reuse them because there's still plenty of product in that tube. I don't know if I want to go through all of that again to rip my face off again because it's not the most uh, pleasant thing. It's kind of painful. I, I don't know if I want to do that again because it's not getting me right where I want where I'd rather just have a nose strip for me and my face. But what about you guys? Did you try it the second time and did you have any changes in your mind of what you thought of it. Some of the eye look I did yesterday and today is using the Pure Midnight Masquerade Face Palette. This kind of made a worst for me this year. It was not my favorite. I didn't really like it. There's a ton of fallout. I've tried to use the face products as well and I've used them on my eyes and on my face and they're just like okay. They're not my favorite. But the only thing I really liked about these shadows was the green one. I kind of just want to pop this one green one out and put it in like a subscription box empty palette I get from Ofra or something because I like that. But like I tried to wear this disguise purple on my eyes yesterday and today and I did all of the variations just so I could see how it all applied again. There's a lot of fallout. I used it with a brush. I used it with my finger. 
and I also used it with a wet brush. I also used it with a glitter primer today to try to get more pigment down, and that actually was the best way to do it. Um, the color Exposed, I was not pleased with yesterday. I think I've mentioned this before too. The times I've used this before, I had to coat it like five times with my finger to really get the opacity that I was really looking for. Because when you see colors like this, this masquerade theme, these are bold gem style shades, I want pigment. I want immediate color where I just have to layer it up two times at the most, whereas this I had to put on twice this morning. I did the same look, or I tried to do the same eye look again to try to do it better than I did it yesterday. Using the NYX glitter glue, I put some of this on my eyes after I already had some of the disguise on and then coated it up again. So this is like, I don't know, four or five coats of purple. And then as far as the exposed goes, I kept layering that up as well. And today's eye look looks a bit better than yesterday's. Yesterday was, was very kind of like dull and I mean, not very bold. If I'm gonna go into these shades, I want bold. I just wish these were better. Real talk. Two other things I am wearing on my face today are my Kat Von D lippy in the shade Lolita and my Superhero It mascara on this one eye because I'm comparing it. Starting with the Kat Von D, this made my best list and it made the BoxyCharm Awards that you guys voted on. And if you've missed that video, I'll be sure to link it above and below, just like I will my 2018 best and worst. This is something you guys voted as well and I said was one of my personal favorites. This is amazing formula. You may not like the creator behind it. Kat Von D is very um, polarizing with a lot of topics that we're not getting into because we're talking about makeup. I really love the shade Lolita too. I know some people said they got this really vibrant vibrant pink shade that most of them couldn't vibe with, but this is one of my favorites and I really love it a lot. On this eye right here, I am wearing the Superhero It Cosmetics Mascara. Now this mascara I have a love-hate relationship with. I find that this mascara really flakes on me after about five hours of wear. I'll have a lot of black dots under my eyes. Also, it is super clumpy. I tried to show it yesterday when I was filming, but I don't know if it really came across or not. The formula is a weird consistency that tends to get those clumps on the brush and on the base, at least on mine. I know a lot of people said this is their holy grail, so if this is amazing for you, no shade, totally get it. I like how it elongates and it thickens up my lashes. I think it does a good job of that, but it becomes so messy that I took this with me while I was traveling. I just found this made me have to go back in and do fixes under the eye, on top of the eye. It's just a very clumpy formula for me, but I know a lot of people love it. I do like how this eye has a lot of thick, thicker lashes that really give you that false lash look and it's kind of more elongated. It kind of opens my round eyes up a lot more than what I'm gonna be talking about over here. I like the look of this, like the final look of this well enough. It's the application that's a pain in the tuchus. But yesterday when I had this on both eyes, I just at the end of the day had all of this fallout right down here, which I was so disappointed in. And I personally feel like I have to wait far too long to spray down my face. And I know most people be like, okay, well then just apply your mascara after you spray down your face with your finishing spray. I'm a creature of habit and I forget to do that. And I have forgotten to do that every time I've used this because as soon as I spray my face down, I feel like the clumps aren't fully dry yet. So it just immediately goes under the eyes. I always have to do a cleanup. I don't always have time for that extra step. Well, I really enjoy the finished look. I don't wanna say I love it, I have a love-hate relationship with this, but it's it's not my favorite though. The next month we were all gold diggers. We got in another amazing box and we got some Lexi brushes in there. So you knew it was gonna be at least something good in there. We got four gold Lexi brushes that I love. I reused them again yesterday, I used them again today. I think these are really great for doing some defined work. You could go under your eyes, you could get into the crease a little bit, you could pack on the outside, you could do under the brow, in the corner, all of the things. You can do all the things with these and I love them. I also like that they're just like a little fancy version of Luxie because usually we're used to the pink handles and this is just like a little holiday fancy version. I really like them. That went along with the Ace Beauté Grandiose Palette. I love this. I have traveled with this two or three times at the end of 2018. The one thing I really wish it had was a mirror and I really could have used that even last weekend. I took this with me when I was traveling for a wedding. I love the colors. I love jumping into the shade Jasmine here to pack on the lid. These are really pigmented shades. I think they are great. I'm so glad we got them at the end of the year because that was when I was going to pull out all of those fun looks. And I got a ton of compliments using this palette. It lasts all day, really blendable, super pigmented, everything I really like in a palette. 
Uh, Jante Blue, uh, if you did not see my 2018 best and worst, spoiler alert, this was on my worst list and it was also on your worst list. In the BoxyCharm Awards, you all said you did not want Jante Blue, especially the liners, the eyeliners in your box in the future, and I agree. I'm going to declutter this right now on camera because I used it, I can't donate it, I don't like it, I'm not going to reach for it. Bye! Two other things I'm not wearing today. I wore one of these yesterday. Um, the first time I wore this, it actually made me itch on my skin, so that's why I hadn't reached for it a ton. But this is the Cover FX Glitter Drops, and this was actually everyone's favorite for the Shimmer Award for the Boxy Charms in 2018. So I understand there's a lot of people that love this. I like this on my eyes, I think, the most, and that may be the only way I really reach for this. Yesterday, I put it on my shoulders, and I was like, let me just see if I get any itching. It took longer to get to itching because it, like, here's where it itches me a lot here it wasn't too bad but I was still like finding you know sparkles the rest of the day I only really like this for my eyes I know a lot of people said they like it in their foundation as a body shimmer I also got this earlier this year so I feel like this Sol Janeiro body glow is way better for my body and it doesn't make me itch so I think if I do hang on to this it'll only be for eye looks I just hope I remember to use it that's a big struggle of mine too because I have so many great powder shimmers that I like to use for my eyes so we'll see how this plays out but so many of you loved it last year and said this was your favorite shimmer product of 2018. The other thing that I'm not wearing today because I wanted to compare my two different mascaras that I got in the fourth quarter, but I have loved these and raved about these and you guys have told me in my comments how much you love it when I wear these. These are the Lashaholic Luxury Lashes. We've gotten so many lashes that a lot of you don't like and I was just like, you know what, I'm always going to try them and see how they go. This was my favorite pair of 2018. We've got a couple different pairs obviously throughout the year, but throughout the time with BoxyCharm. I've been with BoxyCharm three years. I got a lot of lashes. I really, really like these. They go well on my eye shape because I have very round eyes and I just have to literally plop them on and they're good to go. Tis the season was the December box and most of you know I get boxy Lux. I pay for my own box so that's something I've invested here for me to try new makeup for you guys. I got some amazing things this past month and some things that I just don't gravitate to that I have to remind myself to use. So let's talk about it. First and foremost, BoxyCharm, you can keep throwing Luxie brushes at us all day long. As most of you know, everybody said that they loved all of the brushes we got. And this was the big bundle that I got. I got a lot of Luxie brushes in 2018. I'm so grateful. I love this big Luxie 532 round top blender brush for literally packing on powders. I have oily skin. And when I do this at the beginning of my day with some powder, I notice that it's stays intact so much longer. So this flat brush really is good for that. This curved one, I first tried it for bronzers, but really this is a contour brush for me. What is it called even? This is it's a pro precision brush for the face. I like to pack in contour where I want it, like in the hollows of the cheekbones, under the face. Um, I actually didn't think I'd gravitate to this too much, but I've actually used this twice and really like it. This is the Luxie 201 Brow and Lash Brush. I've always said I have a ton of these, but the other ones that I were was using were not as, I don't know, fluffy as this one. So I appreciate this one a bit. So I've kind of taken out all the other ones out of my rotation and just started using this to help with the brows and the lashes. I really enjoy this. The one I probably, obviously all the other ones I like, but the one I don't know if I'm ever going to use and I haven't yet is this weird tube one that people thought was a broken brush when really it's a lip brush. I have a feeling I'm going to end up using this for eyes like many of you said you did for kind of like getting in that inner corner maybe for packing some glitter, stuff like that. Maybe combining with something like this, drop it, pop it. You know what I mean? That's a good idea. That's probably all I'm going to use this for, and I don't know if I'm going to keep this lid because I forget what it is. The Wander Beauty Wanderous Dust to Dawn palette, I have to remind myself to use. I have other blushes that I've gotten from BoxyCharm that I really enjoy, and highlighters that I like so much better. Yesterday I put this on for you with my fluffy brush that I like to use for blush and you really have to like because of the size of the pan it's so obnoxious to me I don't know why this bugs me it just does I have to kind of like move my brush around to make it work pop it on my cheeks I do have to tap it off though because I'm actually putting on 
too much product in some spots because of the way this pan is shaped it's aggravating um the city lights highlighter does okay it's got this golden rose gold look to it that when you apply it it's it's good but i like a little bit more zhuzh personally that's just a personal preference so what i would do is get my brush wet and then reapply it and i thought it did better then today i'm wearing it but i'm also wearing it with one of my ofer colors that's got a little bit of a pink to it so it gave it a little bit more pop and i like that even more pans are so obnoxious I don't know because my blush brush is big I don't know if I'm gonna keep this for very long because I don't use a lot of blush and I have other blushes so we'll see how it goes but I do like the formula I don't like the packaging I guess is the main thing it's not my favorite highlighter either and my highlighter collection is a little ridiculous so it's one of those things where it's like it's not a bad product and I'm grateful that I got it but I probably wouldn't go buy this myself type thing Something I really wanted to try the last few days because I haven't gotten an opportunity to use it as much because I was using a lot of other things while I was traveling was the Violet Voss Pro Eyeshadow. I love how big this mirror is, but to be real with you, traveling with this would have been really obnoxious and hard for me, so I did not travel with it. I think this has a lot of beautiful shades in it, a lot of great transitions. I kind of like to use a Thanks a Latte a lot as an all-over eye color and then add in some different besties and Are You Kitten Me's for the crease and then kind of build up. Today I have on, oh my gosh, we have so many palettes. I use this with this and a little bit of this today and yesterday. So I, I'm pretty pleased with this. It's just the size that I think this was kind of like the final palette that we got from BoxyCharm in 2018 that made me realize I'm going to need to do an eyeshadow palette declutter soon because my drawer is overflowing and this one on top or even trying to be under things isn't working. So I think you're going to be seeing an eyeshadow palette declutter soon as much as that pains me because I love eyeshadow palettes because I have so many now that I feel like this keeps getting pushed around when I really should be trying it even more. I love the hashtag color. I love an orange though. You guys know that, but I was trying other things. I liked a lot of these wine and dines. This is super pigmented. Some of it has a little bit of fallout, but nothing crazy. This is a great palette, just hard to travel with. The other mascara that I'm wearing on my right eye today, left to you, is this Lorac Pro Lash Pomade. Now, there were a lot of different variations in the box you could get, and not a lot of people got this. What I can tell you about this is I really enjoy the curvature of this brush because this will curl your lashes like crazy. It does a great job of that. What it won't do is give you this false lash look. It will give you a curved, I'm wearing something like mascara, darkens the eyelashes, maybe elongates a teeny bit, but it doesn't do anything like this where it opens the eye up for me. This eye even looks a little bit more almond as I'm looking at my viewfinder, whereas this one looks more round like my natural eye shape because of the lashes. This is such a beautiful brush though. I love how this feels in my hand. I think the, the tube feels great. I think it feels very luxury. This is just such a thin formula. It doesn't do much for my eyelashes to complement my eye shape, in my opinion. I haven't let go of it yet though because I did travel trying both of these together. Starting with this one that kind of separates elongates and curls and then adding this in for the volume and the thickness and the dramatics that I like for my eyes. And then it does well except this is so dang clumpy. This is why this is like a mascara story. This on first, than this, but then it gets clumpy and then it gets a little be a little bit of mess because this is such a chunky product for me. So ugh, I'm looking for the perfect mascara all the time when it comes to these. I have some drugstore ones that I love, but we're not gonna get into that now. Tardis lip paint I am wearing today over my Kat Von D. This is supposed to be, I say supposed to be, a very shimmery. This is straight gold. This is it says it's a Tardis lip paint. The way I read it before, too, I think it's supposed to be like a shimmer shimmer lip or whatever to me this just now looks like a gloss after I apply it I think it looks great and I think it really gives you just that little wet feel that you want to when you're looking for that shine look if I look really closely into my mirrors over here I can see some like touches of sunlight sparkle as the sun hits it it's not something I gravitate to a lot because I don't really want to have glitter all over my lips but it's fun for the holidays and I do reach for it occasionally. Like when we went to New Year's Eve, I absolutely had this in my bag. Am I going to reach for it a lot? Probably not, but it is a good product. Elemis made 
everyone's top list this year. You guys were even writing it in as far as the favorites of 2018 went. This is the Pro Collagen Marine Cream. I really do like this. This is a daytime anti-wrinkle cream. You can wear it underneath all of your makeup. I don't think I've broken out from it. I've been trying a lot of different products, so I'm going to keep using this, and I really enjoy. This is a high dollar item, so that could be also why it's probably got special ingredients in it that help a girl from not breaking out. This was a definitely a standout for so many people this year, and I really loved getting it in boxy looks. I did travel with my little straightener. I gave you guys the option in my Instagram stories what you wanted me to get when I had a this or that option from my boxy lux. It was either going to be another palette, which goodness knows I don't need, or this little guy. And I was so glad you guys picked this, and I'm so glad I got a color that I like, which is such a superficial thing, but I like it. I have traveled with this, and I've tried to use it. It does okay. I mean, look at the amount of hair I got here. Just even trying to look at my viewfinder, I'm like, sheesh, girl. Your hair is crazy. I have a lot of it. And I live in Florida where the humidity is always going to be slightly higher than anywhere else. Sometimes significantly higher. I think this, well, I've heard some people in my comments below say that even for thin hair, it's only okay. Some people have raved about it, said it's fantastic. So it absolutely depends on your type of hair, how you style your hair, all that. It does help with those little frizzes because I get those little like... <sighs> crazy ones right up here and it does help smooth those out. Is it ever going to replace a big one for me? Heck no. Look at all this mess. But it is a lot of fun and I did travel with it and it did okay. It did as well as I expected it to. Based off all the reviews of people saying this hardly charges your phone. I have never used this. It also heats up. Some people said it started to melt. I have not used this because when I was traveling I needed my phone. I didn't need anything to melt. I didn't want to get TSA pulling me aside for a melted charger. I didn't want to do that. So I have not used this and this is not getting a lot of glowing reviews. Reviews. Tell me below if you've tried it and if you've had any success or if you're just like boxy charm. What were you thinking? I also heard Crimes of Beauty said this was a boxy charm product. Their logos on it, but they were saying that this is actually a boxy charm item. So beware. This will be more fun for like going out on the weekends and stuff, but I've not gotten to use this yet. But it's just a cute little clutch. Because I don't have it in front of me, I almost forgot the spongella, spongelli, little uh, star soap infused exfoliator. I use it in the shower on my legs. I really like it. I don't really like it on my upper body so much except for the elbows. I like it on my elbows and my legs and I think it does a decent job for what it is. Um, I don't know how everybody felt about getting something that's more of a shower based product in boxy Lux. We have gotten some conditioners and stuff like that in the past. I didn't mind it and I actually enjoyed it. I even think my husband likes it a little bit but don't tell him I told you okay. Guys thank you so much for watching my fourth quarterly annual BoxyCharm review. I love to go in depth with these products to let you know a little bit more about what I think about them, but I always love to hear from you guys. So be sure to tell me below what your thoughts are on all of the months, all of the products, and I hope you don't mind me saying, talking about BoxyCharm one more time for 2018. Thank you guys so much for watching, and if you happen to be new to my crazy little channel, hi new friend. I hope you take a quick moment to hit that subscribe button down below to see all of the fun, loud, weird, unique videos I've put out every single week. Bye friends!